Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to be introducing the notion of RxJS subject. We have kept this notion to the end of the course because the notion of subject might easily be misused. It's better to, as much as possible, create our observables using, for example, observable.create, like we have done here in our HTTP observable, or by using some of the many methods available in RxJS, such as, for example, from promise and other methods like of that allow us to create an observable directly from a source. However, if some of those methods are not convenient or if we run into a source of data that is not easily transformable into an observable or if we are doing multicasting of one value to multiple separate observable consumers, then we might want to look into the notion of subject. So here in our HTTP observable, we had here a very clear separation between the observable that is getting returned here by the create method and the observer, which is this parameter here that allows us to either emit a new value using next or complete or error out the observable. In this way of creating observables, there is a very clear separation between the observable and the observer. But there are many situations where this is not a very convenient way of creating an observable. And in those situations, we can resort to the use of a subject. A subject is at the same time an observer and an observable. Let's switch here to the about component and quickly create a new subject. We are going to define here a variable called subject and we are going to assign it a new subject that we are going to instantiate. Now let's have a look at the API of this subject. We have here the same methods that we had in the case of an observable. We have here the next method, we have here the error method and we have here the complete method as well. But we have more than these three observer specific methods. We have also here the pipe function call. So we can pipe this subject together with any RxJS operator. So a subject, it looks like it's simultaneously an observable and an observer. We can directly emit values with it, but we can also combine it with other observables. Although we could use a subject here as a public member variable, for example, of this component and share it directly with other components of the application, that is usually not a good idea. The subject is meant to be private to the part of the application that is emitting a given set of data. The same way that here in our HTTP observable, we wouldn't want other parts of the program to get access here to this observer. Only this part of the program can emit errors, complete the HTTP observable or emit the backend response. It would not be a very good idea to share this observer outside of this method. Going back here to the about component, we can quickly derive an observable from the subject by using the following method. We are going to do subject as observable. This is going to get us back an observable that we can assign here to a variable that we are going to call simply series one. So this observable here is emitting the values of the subject. This means that if we do subject.next and we issue here a couple of values, let's say we are going to issue the values one, two and three. These values that are getting emitted here via this subject are also being emitted here in its derived observable. It's okay to share here the series observable with other parts of the application because unlike here the subject, we don't have here the next or error or complete methods that we have in case of the subject. So other parts of the application will only be able to subscribe to the values emitted by this observable, but they will not be able to emit values on behalf of the observable itself. In order to see that this series observable behaves like any other observable, let's do the following. We are going to move it here and we are going to define it. Next, we are going to immediately subscribe to it. So we are going to subscribe and log the values here to the console using console.log. 
Next, we are going to emit three values for this observable and we're going to go ahead and call complete on it. The idea here is to demonstrate that we have just used the subject to produce a custom observable. Let's see this observable in action. If we check here the console, we're going to see that we have here the values 1, 2, 3 defined as expected. As we can see, a subject is a very convenient way of creating a custom observable. What we have here is much easier to understand than using observable.create. There are a couple of differences though. We don't have any way of providing unsubscribe logic to our observable that gets derived here from this subject. And we also run the risk of sharing accidentally the subject with other parts of the application which means that those other parts of the application could potentially take over the behavior of the observable by directly calling next, complete or error on the subject, which is not intended. By this reason, we should try to use subjects as little as possible. Instead, we should try to derive our observables directly from the source as much as possible using methods such as, for example, from promise to derive an observable from a promise or simply the from method that allows us to derive an observable directly from a browser event, for example. So these are the preferred ways for creating our own observable by using these RxJS utility methods. However, if by some reason that is not practical or even possible, then using a subject is a great way of creating a custom observable. Notice that another very common use case for RxJS subjects is multicasting. In the case of multicasting, we want to take one value from one observable stream and re-emit that into multiple separate output streams. As we will see, the notion of subject is going to be essential for us to implement our own custom store solution. Let's then learn more about subjects. Let's cover what are the multiple different types of subjects.